What's good? This is JVB representing SPD, and that is sportsperdiem.com. I want to talk about Addison Russell and the press conference from yesterday. Obviously, we know that Addison Russell is currently serving a 40-game suspension given to him by Major League Baseball for domestic violence. About the press conference, man, it was bad. It sounded so robotic, and I get it. Professional athletes aren't public speakers. Most of them can't really talk, you know, the way that somebody that's educated may be able to talk. But the tone that he had, the monotone, deadpan, straight by the book, scripted speech was bad. It sounded so fake and by the book. And we're talking about domestic violence. This isn't, oh, damn, I got caught using steroids or HGH. I am sorry. I got caught. I will not do it again. I'm sorry to everyone, my team, yada, yada, yada. Or I violated team rules. I'm sorry. It was stupid of me to do this. I won't do it again. I apologize to my team and the fans, yada, yada, yada. But this was domestic violence. You are or you have physically, mentally, emotionally, verbally abused someone that you cared for or you may even still care for to this day. What you did negatively affected someone that you cared for. So the press conference shouldn't sound it like, oh, I am sorry for what I did. I will not do it again. I am a better person. It should come from the heart. You hurt someone. I don't know in what way you hurt them, but you hurt that person. It's been documented. You're paying the price right now. You hurt that person. I'm proud to say that I've never committed any acts of domestic violence. But if I was to have done something like this, I would feel like shit. And I don't have a public speaking background. But my emotions would be so genuine because I know the type of person that I am, that I will truly feel remorse for the things that I've done. I would truly be upset of the shit that I've done to that person and the effect it may have had on that person after the fact. I would feel like shit and I'll speak to him like this. I will not be a robot when I am talking to the media. Like sometimes it's good to have a PR person because it makes life so easy when you have to go up on a podium and speak to the media. But for something like this, come on, man, show some sincerity, show some compassion, show some emotion. And I don't need you to be fucking crying and shit, all that shit. At least be real, at least come off as being real about what you did. Because a lot of people besides myself may have looked at this press conference and they were like, what the fuck? Why it sounds so, why, why does he, why is he talking like this? Why after every other question, he's like, that's a good question. Oh yeah, man. That's a great question. Who talks like that? Come on, man. This was bad. This was very bad. And I, I really want to know how. Theo Epstein and Jed Hoyer and Cubs Brass really feel about this press conference. Because this this may have got him into even bigger trouble. Because remember, Theo said that, yes, we are giving Addison a second chance. But that doesn't necessarily mean that he will be a Chicago Cub again. For all we know, he could come back in May after his suspension is over. And he can just ride the pine until they trade him. Or they may just cut bait altogether. Who knows? But I don't think this press conference helped him. Like I said, I know he may not be a public speaker. He was probably nervous. I'm sure he was nervous because Addison Russell hasn't been a guy who has been sent out to talk to large groups of people by himself. So I'm sure there was some nerves, but this was bad. It's like every question that was asked, they went over this hundreds of thousands of times. They had bullet points and they told them, you answer this question that way. You answer that question this way, so forth and so on. 
and it sounded so bad. It was horrible. You would think the least his PR people would have done was to tell him to come off genuine, to make it feel like, okay, he is truly sorry for what he did because it sure didn't sound like that yesterday. But I do hope that Ashton Russell has grown from this, just like Kareem Hunt. He's a young guy. And like I talked about in my Kareem Hunt video a month ago, I'm all for giving somebody a second chance. Not all the time, but in some cases, yes. What he did was stupid as fuck. But I want these guys to truly live up to their word and change their lives. Because at the end of the day, I am a Cubs fan. But what will make me most happy if a year from now, five years from now, ten years from now, we hear that Addison Russell has changed his life for the better. He hasn't committed any crimes of domestic violence. He's been clean cut. He has been an upstanding person. And now he goes out and he speaks about domestic violence and how bad it is. That's what I care about most right now. Just as a person, as a man, that's what he needs to worry about most. Fuck coming back to baseball. Baseball is only a part of your life. You're going to still have a whole bunch of years, God willing, on this earth. It's imperative that you change your ways, period. And don't do it just because you're sorry. The same thing with Kareem Hunt. These guys are sorry now, but... For the longest time, they were denying it. Oh, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. No, I didn't do that. No, she she lying. I didn't do that. But push come to shove, shit hit the fan. You get caught up or there's footage out and now you're sorry. Like, are you sorry that you did the action or are you sorry that you got caught? It's just like somebody with a terrible drinking problem that can't help but drink all the fucking time and get wasted. When you on the E-way and you drunk and you swerving through the lanes and you accidentally hit somebody and hurt that person, possibly killing that person, are you sorry that you were drinking or are you sorry that you got caught and you killed somebody? This is real life shit. This isn't, oh man, I took, I injected myself with this so I took this supplement. This is domestic violence. This is something that physically harms another person in many ways. So are you truly working on changing your ways and becoming a better man? I hope so. Like I said, I don't care about if you come back and you hit 20 home runs and drive in over 90 runs. I don't care about that shit. Are you a changed man? Have you changed? Are you changing off the field? Because that's more that's more important than anything you do on that field. At least for me. But I hope it's real. I hope it's genuine. I hope he was just nervous. And he was just up there in front of all those media members. And he just got nervous. And he just he just sounded like that. Yeah, I'm sure he went over it hundreds of thousands of times. But I'm hoping that he truly acts this shit out. That he truly continues to get help and continue to grow as a man. Because that's part of it too. He and Kareem Hunt are still in their early 20s, young and dumb. And I speak for myself and many other people that haven't done something like this, but when we're that young, we do stupid shit. Like I said, we may not commit any domestic violence, but we do stupid shit that we end up regretting or we end up looking back on and saying, man, we were stupid as fuck. We do that all the time. But in a case like this, I truly hope That with the advice they're getting from their peers and just getting older, growing, getting mature as a man, I hope that helps. I hope growing older and wiser truly help these guys turn into men. Because you could be 28, 35, 40, and still act like you fucking 15, 16, 17, 18. You may be of age, but you don't act of age. You got 45-year-old people out here still act like they 20, 21. It's ridiculous. But for Addison Russell and Kareem Hunt, these guys, I hope, truly grow wiser, truly learn from their mistakes and become men, better men. 
You have talent. We've seen it. You've shown it. Kareem Hunt has been a beast in his first two years in the NFL. Addison Russell was the definition of clutch in 2016, regular season and postseason. He's always been a phenomenal glove. He, he's a great defensive player. We've seen these guys' talents, so it would be a damn shame if they went out and did some stupid shit again that just took all of that away. But hopefully Addison Russell truly grows from this. and He continues to seek out help and becoming a better man because – what we listened to yesterday was bad, but I truly hope he was genuine. It didn't sound genuine, but hopefully a year from now, five years from now, we hear that he's a, a great man, he's a great father, and he hasn't committed any crimes whatsoever. I hope that's the case. But in the meantime, in between time, we'll see what happens with Addison Russell because there's still a chance he may not wear a Cubs uniform again. And maybe for him, that can be a good move. Maybe a complete change of scenery is what he needs. But in the time being, players are going to continue to come to spring training, and I'm sure they're going to give him all the more support that he needs, and he really does need that. It'll be interesting to see once his suspension is over, if he is in the Cubs uniform, how the fans react to him. Because I know there's a lot of fans who listen to this press conference, and they feel the exact same way that I do. They felt like it was insincere and it didn't come from the heart. But I truly hope that he is sincere and he really proves all of us wrong. I really do. Because at the end of the day, fuck baseball, fuck sports. This is about your life and your family. So hopefully he does grow from this. But I'm done. Make sure you like the video and share this video. I would truly appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel. Once again, I appreciate it. Thanks for listening. Take it easy. God bless.